Rosemary, thank you very much indeed for uh, that detailed coverage you, uh, you gave us. And uh, there will be an opportunity. We, we, we break for ref uh, uh, refreshments at about 4 o'clock for a few moments. Uh, prior to that, um, um, it may be that there are some questions and answers people will make uh, uh, um, of Marie or Trevor. Um, so if there are questions for Marie, we can take those in, in, in about half an hour or so. But um, it, it gives me very great pleasure to uh, ask Trevor Mann uh, to uh, speak to us now. Trevor is Senior Vice President uh, of Nissan, based at uh, Nissan Sunderland plant, but covering the manufacturing, purchasing and supply chain, man uh, supply chain management for Nissan Europe uh, uh, from April 2007, Trevor, and uh, you oversee all manufacturing operations in Europe, including plant facilities in Spain, the UK, and in Russia, where Nissan will commence uh, uh, a production in early 2009. We saw, Marie, a picture of the Evening Chronicle from uh, uh, 1984. Um, Trevor, you joined Nissan in 1985, so you have 23 years of uh, experience, and we're all looking forward immensely just to hearing what you have to say about Nissan, its history, and who knows uh, the future developments. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Marie for giving us such a, a wonderful presentation explaining the history of Japan and the North East. I'll explain a little bit more about the present day uh, in a few slides. My presentation will be a bit more mechanical, seeing as I am an engineer, uh, rather than the, some of the nice old pictures that we've seen. Excuse my voice, i have uh, just recovering from a bit of a cold. Um, I'll take us through <coughs> those um, pre uh, contents there. Sorry, the, uh, the font uh, has just been disturbed, I think, by the, the translation of the presentation, but I hope you can read it. Uh, that's the background, why, why we chose um, to come to Sunderland. Uh, the development of the Sunderland plant over the, the 20, uh, 23, 24 years that we've been here. Uh, what Sunderland plant looks like today. Um, the contribution of Nissan in the northeast of England. Uh, the future challenges and why we believe that we can remain competitive uh, in this current envi environment. And then we'll obviously hand over uh, to questions. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so the background to why Nissan uh, took the decision to come to the northeast of England. Uh, basically, we know from the history of the decline in the traditional industries in the northeast, uh, the, the mining, the shipbuilding. Uh, you can see there from figures that we've got from uh, some of the NARC, 30,000 job losses through the 1980s uh, in the region. Uh, it coincided with Nissan identifying the need for a European manufacturing base Nissan believed in actually localising its manufacturing close to, the, uh, close to the market, close to the point of sales. And in 1981, that's when the delegation, uh, the travelling, uh, started to identify the best site. And um, Nissan actually studied eight potential locations around uh, Great Britain. Why Sunderland? A uh, large, e eager workforce with experience of heavy industry. Overwhelm, uh, overwhelmingly positive reaction from the local government, community and of course the unions. A proximity to the port of Tyne, uh, there we have a, a deep water facility which is only 10 minutes away from the plant and that actually today has been one of the most competitive advantages that the plant has uh, in its present form. Excellent road and rail transport links, uh, then obviously the A19 and the A1 were very easy to commute around, not quite so today, but uh, at that point in the early 80s, uh, very much so. Um, we had a 3 million square metre greenfield site that was formerly an airfield, which actually gave uh, good access, a uh, good logistics route within in the site. And of course, being an airfield, it was flat and therefore easy to construct the, uh, the site on. And of course, Sunderland's enterprise zone status qualified for government financial assistance, which was very important at that time. So the development of Sunderland plant, uh, you can see that's the, uh, as it looked in 1984 before the groundbreaking, and as you can see, it was the Sunderland, uh, Sunderland airfield. 1984-1985 saw the first construction of the site. And fundamentally then we were what we call a CKD plant, which was a complete knockdown plant. So there was no real manufacturing facilities on site, it was purely assembly. So uh, here we have 
um, the, the painting facility and the, fi the, the final assembly area which housed the body assembly area at the beginning. At that point in time there would have been around about 600 employees on the site and as many people said and it was reported in the press we were then what people call a screwdriver plant. It's not quite the same today. Phase two as we called it between 1987 and 1990 we started to extend the plant and then we came, became really a fully integrated manufacturing site. You can see there we added injection moulding, uh, press shop or stamping facilities, engine assembly and machining facilities and we also extended the body shop and you can see the construction. This is the press area here, extensions to the paint shop and the uh, engine manufacturing areas being uh, uh, constructed at that point in time. Phase three uh, was further expansions and we expanded our manufacturing process to manufacture axles. Uh, we built a casting plant, a low pressure aluminium die casting plant on site and we further expanded paint uh, body assembly and final assembly or trim and chassis as we call it uh, to expand to uh, house further models. So you can see in overall volume terms how we have grown through the years, uh, starting the very first year making 5,000 vehicles and up to today with the new models being launched to a peak production this year of somewhere in the region of 450,000 vehicles. That makes us by far the biggest uh, car plant within the UK uh, with, those, with those numbers. In terms of the um, evolution of the employment levels at the plant, uh, you can see we sharply grew from um, the first six or so hundred at the beginning of the plant when we launched two shifts in this period. And then we have the, what coincided in the peaks with Micro Launch, the Almira Launch, and more recently in terms of Qashqai Launch. What is quite significant, however, is if you look at round about 1992 which coincided with the launch of Micra and 2008 um, we made 246,000 cars in 92 with 5,000 staff and this year we're making 450,000 vehicles with 5,000 staff. Now that is basically uh, the result of uh, productivity and efficiency uh, developments both in the manufacturing process within the vehicle uh, design and development and within the actual assembly and uh, productivity activities which go inside the plant and that's one of the key elements which uh, makes Nissan as one of the most productive car plants actually within, the, uh, within Europe today. So that's what we look like today. Uh, you can see in the background some of our countermeasures to the escalating um, uh, energy prices. We've installed recently uh, eight um, wind turbines to help us with our energy and also our overall green footprint. So uh, where we are today, we're established in 1984, start of production was in 86, the meantime was obviously construction plant, 5,000 employees, uh, capacity on a two shift basis 390,000 and on three shifts is 500,000. So we have half of our plant on three shifts and half on two shifts at the moment. Uh, output in 07 was um, 373,000 and around about 450 this year. We have been the UK's biggest car plant for nine years and we are the UK's biggest car exporter for the last seven years. Um, in terms of the site, we didn't just bring obviously the, the, the car uh, facilities here, we also brought several other manufacturers. 